I'm Mildred Osuma and I work as a distributor in Korogosho area under the OB project. And um, what I deal with is uh, basically assisting women, needy women, to gain access to vouchers that can help them uh, be able to get proper medical care and also cater for their medical bills. That is what the project is basically about. And um, I've been doing it since 2007. Yeah, I started doing it in Kiambu and then was moved to Korogosho in April this year. Kiambu, I, found, I find Kiambu was more exposed to the idea of the butchers. But the women here have uh, sort of some comparisons, so sometimes we meet the challenges of uh, having outsiders, people coming from outside to collect butchers here. But now the thing is also um, a majority of the ones in Korogosho don't have the money, some don't have the money, the 200, they take quite a bit of time to raise the money. Like we had one, for example, today that uh, we registered in July and she got the money today, so she came today. And I met one yesterday who has uh, had four home deliveries. She's never delivered in a hospital and she never had the 200. And she looked very poor to me, so we thought, Okay, I asked her so that I don't encourage that idea of uh, just coming for watchers because they are free. I told her to go and get some, just a little, maybe 20, 50, and then we'd raise as a group or as partners the 200 for her, so that at least she could give birth to one kid in the facility, in the hospital. So that's what we decided to do. When she comes, we are going to raise the other bit for her. Because <laughs> she, she just looks poor. She's really poor, yeah. She's never delivered in a facility, so... You see, like our main aim is to discourage the women from going to the traditional birth attendants because um, they can contract diseases from these women. They even end up paying more anyway. They are more expensive than the vouchers. But some prefer, they just like the idea of massage. You know, they get this massage and uh, this, and they feel good. <laughs> So we tell them they can go for the massage and they come for the voucher to go to the facility to get their babies. So, yeah. So that's the other challenge we have here. The girls here, you, we, like one I, I gave, for, there's one that came was, who was 12. There's one that also came that was 14. Most are between 18, 23 there. But they, you can be surprised they have more than two, even by that age. So they start becoming sexually active very early. Yeah. The thing is, I really like preaching about good morality. Apart from selling vouchers, there's also the aspect of morality. Because you see, they, there are some that prefer shortcuts. They would rather go sleep with a man, they get 10 shillings and get their food for that day, forgetting that they'll get a burden for life, you see. So we try to tell them that even if you are going to get that 10 shillings, why don't you get it maybe washing clothes, you know, or doing something else. So what we do when they come here, we teach them. We give them a educa an education, we teach them uh, about the vouchers because we have the three vouchers. We have the one for gender violence and uh, family planning and safe motherhood. The one for family planning is what we really highlight because so many have had so many stories about the family planning negative so we try to encourage them to use their family planning methods a long term because have some have this mentality like when it comes to the implants their skins are going to be cut and it's going to be a deep cut and <laughs> and they are all sorts of stories so we encourage them to use the long term methods because they really like short term methods and unfortunately, as a result, many get unwanted pregnancies, things they've not planned for. So we encourage them, we try so hard to sensitize on FPs, so that after delivery six weeks, they don't have to wait for their periods to come. They come in, they go immediately for their family planning, because some have this notion of having to wait for their periods to come, <laughs> to receive their periods. So we have to teach them.
Yeah, so after visiting, visiting, doing the home visits, we come back with them to the station where we registered them. Then we give watchers from there because of security reasons. So that we don't give the neighborhood the notion that we walk around with money for our own protection and so. So we come back, give them the watchers, and then we find other means of keeping the money because it's not safe to walk around with money. A majority are told by their friends. Others are told through their hos the hospitals that they go to. The hospitals basically, I think the hospitals play a big part here. Because when they go, they preach. <laughs> it's like they preach about the watchers. So they, they tell them, you go get a watcher, then you come. Instead of keeping them there and having to wave a bill, they encourage them to come. Cardia journey, family planning. <laughs> it's encouraging people to family plan. And we set examples, like we don't have so many kids ourselves. <laughs> Did you give your birth? Do you have a kid? Pardon? Have I have two. I have a seven-year-old girl, and the last one is a one and one month. And I went for the cut. <laughs> so I wouldn't like to have a baby. But you see, the thing is, some are told by their men not to go for it because they feel that it will reduce their sexual uh, activity. They won't be so... I don't know how to put it, but there's one that came here the other day and told us that the husband was saying that it will reduce his stamina. And we thought, is it the husband going to be jabbed or is it the woman? <laughs> but eventually she took it anyway. But she was like, you know, my um, husband is telling me that I won't be able to perform, to that she won't be able to function. And she's also worried about that. So you see the stories, they go around spreading. And then there's also this one of, you hear women saying that uh, maybe you won't have the urge as a woman. So they, they hear all sorts of stories. And you see now if it has happened to one person, and the other will assume that it will also happen to them. But you see, bodies are different. That's what we try to tell them. That yes, they are hormonal, and they don't have to go in line with their hormones. So um, if it hasn't worked for somebody, it doesn't mean it won't work for you. But the best thing is to try, other than just have babies that you can't afford to keep. Hi, Kiambu has distances. The distances are vast. There was a lot of walking. We used to do a lot of walking. Um, the very poor women were the ones living the farthest. You would walk even for two hours to reach a woman's house. And you know what was encouraging is that you'd find the same woman walk two hours to the facility and deliver in a facility. Imagine she'll not deliver in the house. So that would encourage us to walk. Because at the end of the day, she won't deliver in the house because it is far from the facility. She appreciates. And I saw changes during the time I was there. The health centers were... If you, I, I think you'll visit them and you'll say, wow, the cleanliness was classic. Because mm. I was there since 2007 and every year there was change. I remember even when I was going to have my second kid, I was like, why wouldn't... Why not deliver in one of these health centers? They're just clean, you know, very clean and hygienic. And you see the changes over the years. So I could say that the money they were getting was improving the facility. You could see the changes. Yeah. And even the women would come from all over to go to those facilities. So you, if you walk around, then you'll say the facilities are clean, even if they're not that clean. Because you see, like us, when we walk in the field, you meet with feces sometimes. <laughs> Those flying toilets, and you just step on a paper bag. At, so. I mean, the environment is like that. Huh? So when they go to a facility and they don't see such things, and, you know, there are no flies, you say they are clean. Yeah? So most of them say the facilities are clean. The complaints you'll hear them complaining about are not about the dirtiness. Maybe it's just the, how they feel they were treated. Maybe they feel, oh, they took long to... Mm. But cleanliness, super. They all say it's super. <laughs> okay, as a distributor, 
I can say I've learned to take life as it is. I've become very positive and I appreciate whatever I have. Because when I see the surrounding and the places I've worked, I've realized I'm not really so desperate. <laughs> I thought I had problems, <laughs> but there, was, there are many problems. When you walk around, then you realize there are many, many problems. Because even as a distributor, you're forced to go to your pocket, you know, in your pocket and help in another way other than just give the voucher. We cried, tears dried, because it's every day. So now we just look at women and their problems. Like, that, like there's another one that was saying if it was not for security issues, we could have taken you to that house. This is a lady, she, is, um, she has six kids. It's a small house, a mad house. She goes to wash clothes. And this, and when she goes washing, they give her 50 shillings, so 100. And her husband died this year, left her pregnant with the seventh kid, she's 32. It's desperate. You look at that and you say you are just okay. You are comfortable. You thank your God for that. <laughs> so I say it's a therapy in itself because even if I'm a little bit ill or even have when I have a cold or something, I don't feel I'm that sick. I can, at least I can go and help someone out there. I won't, you won't find me sleeping. <laughs> Like now I went through some, you know, like I, I'm not really well even now, but I, I, I'm not that sick either. When I see the problems, you say, ah, why not help these women? At the end of the day, okay, even if you get something out of it, like in terms of pay, you can't compare it with the satisfaction that you get, that you've helped somebody. Even if it's not your money, but you've been used to helping. So that inner feeling is enough. <laughs> it keeps me going. Yeah.